All right, guys, good morning and welcome to the channel. It is day two with Evan's SC300. Ethan's underneath the car working right now, and what are we doing today? A bunch of fuel line stuff? Yes, sir. We got that hard line started. Well, the transition from the stock hard line to the AN line started yesterday. Okay. So now I need to run this line up. I'm going to run to a new fuel filter that I'm going to locate approximately where this one is. Um, and right now I'm ripping into this jacketing off the stock fuel line setup because we're going to put this new line tuck it right in there with those um, and this thing is really beat up too so we might make up make some kind of further provision to kind of cover the fuel lines back up but this thing is in a lot of pieces a lot of pieces a lot of pieces yeah well oh, there it goes okay so now we got the now we got the fuel lines exposed all the way forward sweet so that's that's gonna go all the way up to the rail boom Okay, so I got this line kind of routed where it needs to be. It's going to have to tuck up above the subframe there, behind that guy. And so I've got my first uh, piece of tape right here. This is probably going to be a little bit too long, but I, I like to have it too long. And then, you know, I'm going to have to zip tie some of those, some of the cable up to keep it out. So I want to cut it too long at first. Yes. And maybe I'll have to cut it a couple more times, but that's, that's fine. That's okay. Yep. You can always take away. You can't put yep. more on. There we go. It's a little bit easier to work with instead of having that 20 feet hanging off of there. Well, that might that might end up being that might end up being just right. Good length. Okay. So the debate is, I probably need to go ahead and unmount this filter and then mount my new one before I can decide what angle is the appropriate because we got an assortment of different uh, fittings. AN fittings, different angles. So probably need to have my new filter mounted before I establish what, what angle I need there. Okay, let's get the new so filter. let's see, I need a 10s and I need to crack these guys free, which is I think 19 and 14. And all the fuel that came out yesterday means that I'm not gonna have to take any more baths. It's definitely not under pressure. You're not gonna have anything shoot out at your camera Ryan cool um, gritty stuff right there and this uh, frame rail here we're gonna run the fuel lines right along here but it looks like I don't know if uh, Evan did some grinding with this car or what like down a rail <laughs> this yeah. is a, I guess that's a speed skateboarding kind of thing right there but this whole piece has taken hits which makes me a little bit worried so we got our, our new fuel filter part of it at least I don't have the whole element in there or whatnot but and then our mount um, so I'm debating whether I want to go here in this kind of factory spot or if I would like to we don't have any hot parts extremely close here so it would be fine for it to be in this area here if I remove this heat shield um, kind of like that and then it's like whew, straight into that channel and that straight ripped open there like look at that not that that's I mean that's not really going to affect the car but um, yeah, but it's it's not a good sign for fuel lines that you're about to put right there um, Okay, so I'm pretty sure I've decided on the spot. I pulled that heat shield off I think that's gonna go right there, and I think I'll use like this fitting Right there to shoot up at a 45 degree angle and it looks like it'll be a perfect shot right there um, And then here I'll need to use a uh, another 45 degree so I may need to bring it back just a tiny bit so that this 45 degree can come on down like a so and come into that. And we maybe we need to make a plate over that um, just to, to protect it rather than, because there's really not much option as far as routing. Like I could go up in there like I was saying earlier, but once you get back here, I mean, and then this is the area that's been hit, so. I think we're gonna have to make a plate there. We've made plates like that before on a few cars. Just depends on how rowdy you think the driver's gonna get. I'd say rowdy. <laughs> you see the the Subaru video? Uh, the, uh, the 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 totaled the, Subaru man. He's he was getting it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like your style, Evan. We like your style, Evan. <laughs> we like to shred as well. If you don't drive it, we don't care. <laughs> yep. If it just looks pretty, I don't care. 
So we were taking a quick little break here for just a couple seconds and Ethan wanted to show you all what's going on over here. This is Trigger Squad right here. I already know in the comments on Evan's video that y'all were triggered by this car, but we oh, love they it. Didn't like, they didn't like the 2JZ? Oh, they were triggered because... Some rotary lovers? No, no, because Evan said right motor, oh, right I chassis. Oh, I hear that part, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. motor, right chassis, just he like was, I did. He was, he was trying to trigger them. Yeah, maybe. exactly. Um, but anyway, so it seems like we might be working backwards in this, but we knew there was an overheating issue, um, and I thought maybe, maybe it was just like radiator or fans or something, but... It proved that uh, it was not the case. Yeah. So we ended up doing, first we, you know, we did leak down, did compression and all that. Numbers one and six had very good leak down. And the middle four cylinders were okay, but definitely some leak down out of the exhaust valves in multiple cylinders. Um, could be partially from overheating, could be uh, more likely from a lot of ignition timing that was in the, uh, in the timing map for the car. Um, and it's pump gas and it had a lot of timing, much yeah. more than we have in even some of these ethanol uh, running 2JZ cars. Yeah. So anyways, I mean, there's there's aggressive tuning and then there's past the, and I think that's what happened here. Now, if you wanna look, I, th I think this is kind of interesting to see. If you look at the underside here, remember I said one and six were good. You can see the coloration is nice and uniform on one and six. And then the four that didn't have good compression, they are kind of ugly and random, you know? So, and, and when I say they didn't have good compression, they didn't have perfect compression. Yes. Um, and I think, I think they were, uh, leak down though was like 40% out of a couple of these. So yeah. definitely in need of a valve job. Uh, it's going to get decked of course to check for flatness because I know it's been overheated. Um, new head gasket. It's got ARP studs already. We'll probably, uh, we need to check those and make sure that they're, uh, usable again. Yes, sir. That looks more like it. Looks like it's a good length now. He found a spot for the bracket right there. He's got it all lined up and marked off. But not on there enough yet. So I'm, I might have to take this line back off to get that truly snug fit it's home yeah yeah you you want to make sure with an an line that i don't know if you can see inside there but the rubber is not all the way in yet so if i stab that other piece in right now it might kick the hose out rather than Suck. expand it and seal it up um i've definitely seen that happen before and i've definitely seen some hoses that were just barely engaged like so you got to look inside there and make sure that that the hose is all the way flush to the bottom, like as far in as it could possibly go. So you gotta be careful when you're lubing up stuff like this. You don't want to use something that's bad for the fitting or something that's gonna stop the sealing of it. But I like to put just a little bit of assembly lube and then kind of even put it on there and then kind of wipe it off. Um, but that helps when this goes in so that it it's not just dry and yeah metal just, on metal yeah really the metal on the uh the rubber is the it'll it'll grab and it could potentially hurt the rubber if you're not um you know mindful of it turn it in oh i hear something cammed I, I, and i feel like i hear something out there. i feel like i hear something We actually might have had a uh, special little surprise for y'all today. Oh yes. It was, uh, you know, 
had had the problems that he uh, was describing. Uh, quick car, definitely see room for improvement in a lot of things. Um, we definitely recorded some some heavy trimming uh, at points. Let's see if I can find a spot on. So there's right there is we're at uh, 1600 RPMs and it's 12 and a half, 12.9. That's the two different banks. So it's at least close to 13% off right there at 1600 RPMs. And he's getting this surge down there because you cruise a lot at, you know, between 1300 and 1800 RPMs in, in the final gear. Um, so this, this little fuel discrepancy here, I mean, you can have like 5%, you know, you want to have, yeah. the goal is to be, the goal is to be 5%, uh, you know, within five positive or negative. I really like to be, have the car slightly rich so that uh, you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be on the lean side of things. Yeah. So I'd love to see it be, you know, taking away a couple percent, two, three percent all the time. Yeah. Uh, versus this one is, ha has a lot of adding going on. Um, so we're going to try to eliminate that. Eliminate that. There's also maybe some base, uh, base running airflow uh, issue as well. But I'm going to go in the office and take a real close look at this. Um, it's had a lot of work done and it's a lot of people have, uh, Put their on hands the on it. Um, there's not just not just engine tuning, which is all I was talking about right now, really. Uh, but then there's also transmission tuning and like torque converter lockup that can come into play. Um, so a lot of things to look at, especially when a car has been had this many changes and this many hands on the on the tune. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ethan's going to knock this out real quick, and then we'll get back to Evans SC300 in just a second. All right. So what, what do we got here? line that we pulled off a minute ago. So I'm just. Uh, Closing it up all the way right now so we can put it back on and get our filter mounted up. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be right there, but. Hey, look at that. Yeah, that'll be. That'll, that'll be, be good. Perfect. Like if you come right here, you can see that's got a yep. straight shot on into that channel. So yeah, pretty happy with that so far. Next up. Um, is then run, uh, add the long chunk of line from here to run all the way up to the fuel rail. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna put this on and then we're gonna call it on this for the moment. Breaking that stud away from there, and then I can maybe even break that away. Yeah, I can. Well, I can put it on top of. Well, once I break that stud, I can put the line on top of that right That's there. That's smart. And but top is it of that, on top it? of that, is no, it no, it'll be fine. This is, doesn't have much yeah. tension on it. But yeah, no, I think that's smart. And then break off, break, it over. break off each one of those, and uh, unless I can, hmm. All right, guys. Well, we are gonna uh, wrap it up for the day right there. I got that line run from the fuel. Got the fuel filter mounted and got the line run all the way forward in the in the channel here. Take a peek. Look oh. how pretty that looks. Nice and solid. Happy with how the line came into this channel and it's making its way all the way to way the front forward. And so we uh, we will uh, finish this fuel setup tomorrow in the next episode so please uh please check that one out and hopefully we'll get this thing on the dyno pretty soon and, and get to the really exciting part all right guys we will see y'all next episode where we finish up the fuel system see y'all later